How's it going, everybody? Today on No Dumb Questions in Ham Radio, we have two submissions to talk about on powering radios. One, how do you actually connect your radio to a power source, power supply or battery? And two, HT batteries. Should you hoard them from the factory as far as a production model or buy third party? Hmm, let's get started. So today's first question is about powering radios, mobile radios, base station radios, QRP radios, any kind of radio. And it, it's something that uh, I've done in YouTube videos and, and the commenter, the emailer is kind of asking a question on what is the dirty bits in getting it all hooked up because I've definitely done something like, okay everybody, hey, thanks for tuning in. We're gonna take a look at this radio. Let me get it connected and I'll get right back with you. And so, as you can imagine, um, I skipped the whole part of explaining you how we connected the power on the end. And I don't do this all the time, but I've definitely done it, so I know that's true. Anyway, thanks for the email. It's very good. Uh, the question here really pertains to how we make connections to our radios. There are often, you know, not proprietary, but connectors that certain companies use for their radios. Some are simple coaxial cables, and some are more complicated, like this six-pin uh, connector that Yesu uses on this 857. Well, this is the starting point, right? And then you're going to need some wire to go to the power supply. What I think um, a lot of people don't consider is that we actually approach this in a couple of ways. So here's the here's the six-pin connector for that Yesu. And on the other end, which when you buy this stock, this would just have bare wire. You can terminate this into whatever you want. So the question isn't, you know, what is the right way to do it? It's what is the right way for you? Power supplies like the one behind me over here and the one right there over my shoulder, they have multiple options for connection. In fact, um, one of the ways that they do it is with these screw-on terminal connectors. These are often used for auto um, cars, connecting to batteries and whatnot. And at the end, I have what's called a power pole. I have power poles on just about all my radios, and I'll use a jumper like this that takes me from power pole to final connection. And it could be these screw-on connectors, it could be spade connectors for a battery, or it could be a coaxial connector, which is, you know, an outer um, bit of metal with a center pin or center socket. In this case, I have it terminated to a power pole again so that when I go to whatever battery source, which usually has this little jumper connected to it, I plug in. That's kind of the secret sauce, if you will. It's just having the connectors on hand that you can make up these little adapters. And then once you have a good supply of these adapters, then it's just as simple as putting on a power pole connector. There are other connectors like banana plugs, um, again, screw down connectors, and for some power supplies, you can just go in with bare wire on the screw on connectors. And you know what? That's fine. What I like to do is actually have a little plastic tray. It's almost like a tackle box, but for electronics with little divided pieces. And I have banana plug connectors. I have automotive connectors. I have all that on hand. And then I just have a good pair of crimping pliers to apply the crimp of the connector onto the bare wire. And sometimes I hit it with solder too, just to make an extra stable connection. Case in point, you can kind of get fancy with these. Um, I've applied heat shrink and I've got a power pulse connector and then I've got a tiny specific coaxial cable. Again, not, not proprietary, but rarer, something you'd see like on handhelds maybe. This goes to the true SDX. On the other hand, I've got one big fat chungus coax connector, which works with most other QRP radios. It failed. So having uh, the right capability to crimp on connectors and also solder them in places is always really helpful. You know, when you're out in the field, you don't want to have a failure like this because it pretty much ruins your day. Now, for those that are asking, uh, yeah, the, the power pulse connector is, is pretty standard within amateur radio. It's kind of like our uh, connector of choice, whether or not it's everybody's favorite connector or not, it's pretty much everywhere. Batteries for ham radio have it already connected, like in the case of BioNOs. My MFJ has power poles, actually both of them do. So I use power poles on pretty much everything and they've worked out just fine for me. In fact, they make little junction blocks that you can buy, which I also own, that you can use to connect multiple things together, including solar panels, batteries or power supplies and radios or, you know, just other devices. So good question. Thank you for sending that. Hopefully that puts a little bit more meat on the bone uh, that you can work with. Thanks. 
Okay, the next question is on hoarding batteries for HTs. And I think what they mean specifically is, I'm going to go buy an HT. Should I buy a lot of factory batteries to go along with it? Or can I use third-party batteries? And do third-party batteries even exist? The short answer is yes, third-party batteries exist. Maybe you should buy more batteries from the factory. And it's possible that the HD battery that comes with your radio is good enough for a long time. So this is going to come down to the efficiency of your radio. How good is it at maintaining a charge and running for a long time? The individual in the email specifically mentions the THD74, which is a Kenwood radio that has kind of been discontinued. I have a THD72, and that radio sucks battery juice like it's through a boba straw. I can't get a full day out of that radio, particularly when I'm using APRS. On the other hand, my Kenwood THF6, a, an older radio for sure, uh, this lasts a really long time on a charge and, and does really well. The THD72 being APRS, I'm often in a situation where I'm running that heavily and it's sucking that battery charge out. So in my case, if I'm a heavy user of APRS, I may want to have multiple factory batteries charged up and ready to go, or consider a solar option and a battery lead into the radio to keep it topped off. It's not always a good idea to be charging the radio when using the radio. It depends, again, on the radio, and you'll have to look that up specifically, but that is an option. If, however, you're just planning a day of walking around and using the radio for a couple hours, and then it's going to go home and get back on the charger, then you may not need multiple batteries from the manufacturer. In regards to hoarding batteries, would I buy a battery and then put it away for like new old stock in the future when the stock one goes dead? Then I can just go, oh, I've got one of these, swap it out for the new battery? The answer is also kind of maybe. I don't know what the shelf life is on a, most of these batteries, and sometimes you may get a dud that, you know, doesn't hold its charge that well, even though it's been sitting on the shelf not being used. There are third-party batteries. I have always questioned the quality of some of the third-party batteries and have found that generally the factory standard batteries last longer than an equal-sized third-party battery. And I would extend that to cameras or any technology that runs off of a battery. The manufacturer seems to do really well with their batteries, less so third-party. But then you have to factor in as well that third-party batteries are often half the price of the major manufacturer battery. So you get to pick at this point. Do you get to save a little bit of money on the budget battery but ha get half the life? That may be okay with you. That might work with what you're planning on doing. Me personally though, particularly on older radios where the manufacturer may not even make the batteries anymore, you may have to go third party. And in fact, this is carrying a big fat extendo battery on this THF6. And, and you know what? It works fine. I can charge this up and I can use this for days. I can set it on a desk and leave it there for weeks not being used, turn it on and it's got a good enough battery to do whatever it is I'm planning on doing. So again, up to you a bit. So I hope that answers your question. These are all really good submissions. I really do appreciate it. And if you want to have your question answered, you can send it to josh at hamtactical.com. That is an email address. Thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this, found this helpful, click the thumbs up, consider subscribing, click that bell so you know when I go live or make a drop, and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. And Anderson's plug is a little black and red doingy. What was that? I hope that information helps. Sorry, could you say that again? No, I can't. Sorry. And uh, shout out to uh, Mrs. KM4ACK. I don't know if you have a license, but thanks for the mug. I still use it all the time. Cheers.